feeding our nation. I spoke just a little while ago to Senator Bozeman. You know Senator Bozeman. We all do. He's a great senator. He's a great person. We spoke just this morning, and we discussed how important it is to keep our farmers and ranchers, processors, and distributors in our nation's prayers. And I want to thank the senator for the incredible job he's been doing. And a lot of the senators and congressmen and everyone, everybody's working very hard. My administration is working very aggressively to pioneer new medical countermeasures to treat and prevent infection. Working on a lot of things, we must utilize our nation's scientific brilliance to vanquish the virus. We have to vanquish the virus as quickly as we can, because we have a lot of things happening in this country, and we have a great future, but we have to get back to work. This week, the FDA established the Coronavirus Treatment Accelerator Program, which is expediting the development of new antiviral and other therapies, and they're doing it on a very rapid basis. And I think we're having some very good results. We'll tell you about that. HHS continues to speed the development of therapies derived from human blood that have the potential to lessen the severity or shorten the length of the illness. And as you know, last Saturday, the FDA also gave emergency authorization for hydroxychloroquine. And uh, the hydroxychloroquine is a uh, — I hope it's going to be a very important answer. We're having some very good things happening with it, and we're going to be distributing it through the Strategic National Stockpile. It's going into the Strategic National Stockpile to treat certain patients. And we have millions and millions of doses of it, uh, 29 million to be exact. In addition to that, we're making it, and we're also getting it from various other locations and countries. In one case, I called Prime Minister Modi of India this morning. They make large uh, amounts of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, very large amounts, frankly. And I said uh, they had a hold because, you know, they have 1.5 billion people, and they think a lot of it. And I said uh, I'd appreciate it if they would release uh, the amounts that we ordered, and they are giving it serious consideration. But they do make — India makes a lot of it. But we have already 29 million uh, — if you look, I mean, that's a big number. 29 million doses. And we've got millions of doses that are being made here, and many millions of doses that are made elsewhere that are being shipped here, and it will be arriving. We're just hearing really positive stories, and we're continuing to collect the data. But uh, I, I'll just speak for myself. Uh, it's been out for a long time. It's a malaria drug. It's also a drug for lupus. And there's a uh, there's a study out that uh, people with lupus aren't catching this horrible virus. They're not — they're not affected so much by it. Now, maybe that's correct. Maybe it's false. You're going to have to check it out. But uh, there's a lot of very positive things happening with that. That's a game-changer, if that's the case. Obviously, we continue to work on the vaccines, but the vaccines have to be down the road by probably 14, 15, 16 months. We're doing great on the vaccines. I think Johnson & Johnson is leading seems to be leading in terms of the studies, but we'll see what happens. But I feel good about that, but that's down the road. But uh, tremendous promise with — with what's just been mentioned. In addition to that, Gilead Sciences has initiated a phase three. That's down the line, meaning clinical studies of the drug remdesivir. Now, it's approximately 1,000 patients, which is a pretty — Pretty good study. Other drugs are also being studied in patients. And this week, Oracle, great company, donated a new web portal. Larry Ellison, amazing guy, and platform to the government to gather real-time data on how patients are responding to the various new treatments. And they have a 
very sophisticated site, and we'll be learning a lot from Oracle, and thank you to them. We're also spending economic uh, dollars like you wouldn't believe and speeding uh, economic relief to American workers, families, and businesses. Yesterday, the Small Business Administration launched the Paycheck Protection Program to help employees keep paying their workers. In 24 hours, the Small Business Administration and over 1,200 lending partners processed over 28,000 loans. It's so far ahead of schedule. And billions and billions of dollars. Uh, it's worked out incredibly well. And I want to thank Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase and a lot of the big banks that have been involved and a lot of the community banks. Community banks have really jumped on it. And it's uh, so far going way ahead of schedule. The SBA also clarified that faith-based organizations, including houses of worship, are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. That's great. As well as the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program that you're familiar with, on the same terms as every other applicant. If we run out of funding for the Employee Retention Program, I will immediately ask Congress for more money. This is money that's really going directly to the people that need it, the small businesses that need it, and the workers that need it. Finally, I can — because when we open, we want to open strong with businesses that are going. Remember, we had the greatest economy in the world, and then one day we were told, we've got to shut it down, stop it, tell everyone to stay home because of this horrible virus. And we did that. And we did the right thing, but now we have to open. We have to open our country. Finally, I can report that, as of today, the State Department has successfully coordinated the safe return of more than 40,000 Americans stuck abroad on over 400 flights from 75 countries. Many of those countries were terrific in helping us, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, some of them I had to call the leaders of the country, most of whom I know. And uh, once I did, they snapped like you wouldn't believe. They really helped us great, so I appreciate that. So we brought back 40,000 Americans who were literally stuck in some countries with no chance of getting out. We got them back. 400 flights, 75 countries. Think of that. And those countries, in almost every instance, had a big problem with the virus. I want to thank the American people, most of all, for the selfless sacrifices that they're making for our nation. I know it's not pleasant, although some people have said they've gotten to know their family better. And they love their family more than ever. And that's a beautiful thing. They've actually gotten to know them. They were in the same house with their family for a long time. I guess it can also work the other way, perhaps. But we don't want to talk about that. And I want to encourage everyone to keep following our guidelines on slowing the spread. Sustaining this war effort is — and that's what it is. This is a war effort is the patriotic duty of every citizen. While we may be more physically distant for a time, we're closer together in the heart and in the spirit. And through this, great national unity is happening. We're having a great unity developing that a lot of people didn't think would be possible to develop like this. And we will conquer the disease and restore our nation to its full and glorious might. And we're doing really well, and I'm very proud of everybody out there. We're very proud of you. It's uh, something that nobody could have ever projected. It's been over a hundred years that a thing like this has happened. And the problem with this one is the contagion. It's so contagious. Nobody's ever seen anything like that, where it's so contagious. You can be feet away and just talking to somebody and catch it. Uh, you can catch it. You know how long it can live on surfaces. So. Things that nobody even thought of, the level of contagion. So we're getting there. We're going to make sure that it's over soon. And just keep going. It's not going to be long. And thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Hahn to speak. And uh, he's been uh, doing yeoman's work at the FDA. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to speak about